Hello and welcome to Raw History, a low DC dive into D&D through the ages. I'm one of the hosts whose name is Alex. And I'm also the host whose name is Sammy. I really need to figure out how to properly introduce you. Know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm your co-host. Anyway, hey. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. So we are going to focus on things in D&D through the ages, through the different editions, but that might be difficult if you don't know what the editions are, because it's been a long and interesting ride. Yeah, it's it, it makes zero sense. and um... <laughs> Bad business decisions all around. Hey, you know, 5th edition D&D is actually like the 10th edition that, that we've had, really. I don't think it is. I think it's more like the... Sixth or seventh, I'd have to double check. Oh no, uh, one sec. Five, six, seven, eight, ninth. So ninth. I was pretty. I was pretty close. <laughs> but whoa, Sammy, how could something like that happen? Uh, well, before I tell you about it, I'm gonna just say that the history of Dungeons and Dragons is super long and complicated. So that's gonna go in a separate episode. This is the too long, didn't read version. This is the, yeah, this is the the miniature (laughs) cheat sheet reference guide. Yeah. So if you're not super interested in the business and the politics and the the lawsuits, (laughs) this will be your quick guide and reference. And it won't take us three hours to record. It won't take us three hours to get to the actual content. Yeah. Because we're at the content now. Go. Okay, so original D&D. OG D&D. OD&D? OGDD. OGDD. OD&DDD. That started in 1974. You've all heard about war games, miniature war games, tiny little men on a on a battle map. Large number of small Lar- men. Yes, large number of small men. We have okay. so many small men. Oh, okay. but I really care yeah. about this one yeah. small man. Oh, do you really care about that one small man? Oh, let's put a dragon in it. Woo! Okay, so everyone knows Gygax and Arneson. They made Dungeons and Dragons. It's very war game. It's very. It's more like a war game than it is like D&D today. To be a dwarf or an elf, that's a class. That's not a race, that's a class. Mm. Your class is elf. Your class is dwarf. They have to form their own company, uh... TSR or Tactical Studies Rules, which is very difficult to say for some reason. Tactical Studies Rules! Yeah. Original D&D. Uh, it was made by them in their basement. And you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Okay. Basic and Advanced. So Basic is edited by this guy called Eric Holmes, who's a neurologist. And he's like, hey, I love this game, but I want to make it accessible for new players. So he basically rewrites it all so people can access it easily without having to join an awful club. But meanwhile, Gary Gygax is like, hey, it's time for me to make the advanced game. Yeah, and that's basically like the original, but different. It's, yeah, it's the, the original, but more. Yeah. <laughs> and the idea is that you, you, you play basic D&D, you finish that, you get to level four, and then, wow, it's time to step up to advanced D&D. Yeah. So- but that didn't. It didn't really happen because Basic was released in 1977 and Advance released in 1978, except they've only released the Monster Manual at first, which is quite difficult in terms of like, you know. Yeah, how are we going to run a game with this? (laughs) Advanced obviously is popular in its own right, but Basic is super popular. It gets re-released about four times, each one with further level gains. and That's That's where we get get the the red box. Yeah, the different coloured boxes. Um... Yeah, so then uh, it's time for Advanced D&D 2nd Edition, or AD&D 2, 2.0. AD&D 2, 2, Wacky Wizards. So uh, this happens in 1989. Gygax has left the company, and they were like, hey, let's just rewrite this. And they were like, oh, no, it's not a rewrite. We're just organizing it and putting it all in one place because there's about 50 million modules. And then about halfway through, they're like, oh, shit, we're rewriting this. Um, but they still try and keep it as close to Gygax's version of D&D as possible. It goes pretty well. They produce so much content that it actually destroys the company. They have a huge debt with no way to publish or ship things. And then Wizards buys TSR. You know, that big company. That, that big company that magic. makes those, uh, those, card games. those Pokemon cards for a bit and yeah. then doesn't anymore. So yeah, Wizards buys TSR. It literally saves the company because they have a pretty big debt. Yep. Do you want to guess how big that debt is? Three pounds? 
30 million dollars 30 million dollars and that is three pounds <laughs> in today's money in today's money <laughs> um so yeah so now it's time for third edition which doesn't need a silly acronym because they finally dropped the advanced yes yeah which is nice because uh, now i can say it without being yeah. like a d and d d d d yeah you don't need to add the d's on the end i but... do it's just how my mouth works <laughs> So yeah, um, yeah, they dropped the advance because they sorted out a bunch of lawsuits, which is nice. And this came out in 2000. Millennium. That was uh, by Robbie Williams. Okay, so uh, this episode is sponsored <laughs> by Robbie Williams. Um, he's going he's gonna to sue us now, Sammy. <laughs> Robbie Williams oh, no. listens to this podcast oh, no. and he's going to be so mad. <laughs> We're going to have more lawsuits than TSR. Have more lawsuits than TSR. It's not possible. I'm, I, I was going to try and make like a, a Robbie Williams song joke, but... I can't think of any of his songs <laughs> apart from Millennium now. Uh, you know what I mean? Oh, ain't I'm loving TSR instead. What, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, so third edition drops. Everyone likes it. It's great. There's some cool art. Uh, they finally paid more than $3 per illustration. <laughs> <laughs> Um, loads of really cool stuff. Um, they bring in the open game license. Oh, yes. Which basically means all the spin offs they were trying to do in AD&D, they didn't have to publish anymore. Other people would publish them for them. It's actually a really revitalizing thing for yeah. tabletop gaming in general because yeah. of the Roll20 system. It means they don't get sued for Cthulhu stuff or Tolkien <laughs> stuff anymore. <laughs> um yeah uh so three years later in 2003 3.5 gets released which is basically a big revision they fix some stuff it's slightly less broken it's slightly less broken slightly. but then 2008 a good year a bad year a good year fourth edition fourth edition a good edition fourth edition i know everyone hates it it is bad you like it I like it as a nostalgia thing because that's when I first started playing. And I was like, oh, cool, look at all this amazing art. And oh, good, I get to stand on a grid and move. Listen, standing on a grid is one of life's greatest pleasures. (laughs) Fourth edition is the shortest edition. Weird. It's very combat heavy. It was based off popular MMO trends. There's a lot of MMO. Yep. So fourth edition, bad edition. In 2010, they bring out the Essentials line. Uh, they try to fix things, try and streamline it, increase accessibility. It doesn't work. Everyone still hates it. So we'll just fast forward four years to 2014. A good year. A good year. Again. And they released fifth edition. They took loads of notes from third. They did loads of play testing. I mean, you all remember D&D Next. I do. Yeah. Paladins um, had Fireball. Paladins had Fireball. Paladins had Everything Fireball at one great. point. It was terrible. <laughs> And yeah, um... Who gives a paladin fireball? Me. I'm oh, a fire paladin. No. Oh no! <laughs> I will burn you. But yeah, 5th edition releases, and now we're here in 5th edition. Loving life, everything is great. I love 5th edition. If you disagree with me, I don't care. It's good. If you disagree, you can write your uh, complaints on a postcard and mail it to uh, Blue Peter. <laughs> I don't think Blue Peter's a thing anymore. Exactly. Oh. We did it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Joker's trick. So, yeah, Stop saying was... Joker's trick, Alex. <laughs> so that was a very, very short, condensed timeline. All right, so to summarise, OG D&D, 1974. OG D&D. OG D&D. G-O. OG D&D. Basic, 1977. Advanced, 1978. Those advanced are parallel, though. Second, they're parallel, but they did, Advanced did release technically a year yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. Advanced, second edition, 1989. Third edition, 2000. 3.5, 2003. Fourth edition, 2008. Essentials, 2010. And fifth edition, 2014. Bish, bash, bosh. Yeah. 20, 2020. Sixth edition. No. 2025. I think a next edition is still a long way away. I don't know if they're ever going to do it. Like the whole design. That's something that we'll talk about in the main episode that yes. you should listen to on this very same feed. If you're interested in all that kind of if stuff. If you're interested in if that. You're, if you're not, that's totally fine. Skip ahead to our first, our next. One of our episodes. A different episode. Yeah. We've got one about Displacer Beasts. we got mini-sodes where we bring an item and a spell. we got all kinds of things going on. All for you. All for, for your you. enjoyment and entertainment. <laughs> and we can't do our normal sign off with this one because it's a mini weird episode and I didn't bring a dice. Okay, well, 
Uh, thank you so much for listening. If you like this episode, uh, please listen to more. Please like and subscribe. Leave us a review. Send us nice emails. Tell us about your experiences in the D&D timeline of your life. Tell us about your day. Tell us How about you your doing? day. How are you doing? you got to look got after yourself. Go get a cup of tea. You deserve it. <laughs> Bye. Was, was that? <laughs> <laughs> okay.